Today we're going to try two new colors that I purchased from Daniel Smith, so let's get started. Let's see, so I put the, th the four reds that I'm going to use are up there. I have Alizarin Crimson, which is my dark red, a permanent rose, and then these two new colors that I'm trying, Cronacronum Coral and Pyro pyro orange. These are really, really bright colors. And I wanted to see if I could make my rose and my roses to come brighter by using these color, these newly purchased colors. I haven't experimented much with the mixing of these colors, so I'm not exactly sure how they're going to mix with their complementary colors. Um, and so that there's going to be a definite learning curve about this. I'm not putting them on my palette permanently until I know for sure there's something that I want. And I may not, they may never make it permanently. I may stick them on the outside rim of my color wheel, knowing that uh, I can access them if I want a hit of hint of brightness, but but um, they may never be one of my faves. But we'll we'll see. That remains to be seen. What I'm doing with my finger, and if you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm finding my lights, my darks, and my midtones. What I haven't done is I haven't on my um, color dab piece of paper there. I'm testing the dabs before I put them on. So I look for a corresponding value and, and check out what shape it is, and then I'll figure out what color to mix for, for that shape, and I plug it in. And I try to use more than one color whenever possible because watercolor just does that beautifully. You can see in that section I just did, we went from cerulean blue to Naples yellow, and probably down into some of that new uh, quinacronum coral. I, lo I love when um, paint will be wet and will just mix its own self on the piece of paper. Uh, I think that's what draws me to watercolor to begin with. So I try as much as I can to, um, seriously, to, to mix paint on the palette, but once I'm mixed on the palette, then I'm going to put it wet into wet. The paper is not wet. The paper is 140 pound um, cold press arch paper, but I want the colors to actually mix and mingle themselves. Now you're probably wondering why there's so much green in those lower petals. Well, I was looking at the picture and I'm not a matchy-matchy painter. I'm not trying to match my colors to the picture. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to heighten the color in the picture. But I do see where the light comes through those petals that are sticking out. There's a certain amount of green. And that must come from a reflection of the foliage. Maybe it's even coming from a reflection from the sun from uh, outside because the grass is green and the foliage is green right now. And I'm going to take advantage of that because green is the uh, complementary color to red. So anytime I can incorporate a version of green, it's going to enhance that red color. Our eye kind of likes that, you know, and that's the reason that you know, Christmas is red and green. <laughs> Why we respond to that. So let's see. Um, so the rose is coming along pretty good about now. I'm using uh, this probably a number 16 flat brush. I like to use a flat brush, but uh, I think I'll also go back to a round from time to time. That foliage below was really dark, but you always have to make a decision in the painting about what you want to paint and why you want to paint it. And I wanted to paint this rose because I wanted to see if I could make it look like it had form and with emphasis on brightness. And before I forget, I just want to mention that the brightness in a rose is often where those petals are meeting way deep as they go in toward the stem. So I don't want to get heavily involved in the foliage because that was not my primary interest and it's going to take away from the rose. So I want to almost go into some kind of abstract shapes there. And that's just a personal choice. And I like to use as few strokes as possible. But I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that anybody do that. It's just something that I like to do. It's kind of a challenge for me. How few brush strokes, how big a brush can I use and how few brush strokes can I use in order to accomplish my task. Everything is dry now and I'm coming in and looking for those, those darker, darker, but they're also to my eye, brighter moments. And I'm sticking that pyro coral right into that. Let's see, I'm not sure what's happening now. This is when things get pretty serious because, you know, it's it's okay, but I want, I want to really bring this thing home. And that's going to only work if I make really careful decisions here. Stick with my value plan, knowing that my lights are my lightest, and, uh, leaving my lights alone, and you can see I've, I don't use masking fluid. I've just left the whites of the paper white. 
and now I have to figure out some of those mid-tones and see if I can put another stroke there just to reinforce that, that pattern of shape that happens as it comes out of the rows. I, I guess I feel like I kind of had, had done it. Now this was challenging for me, this, this yellow, because I really knew that it had to lean toward orange. To pick up yellow right now is going to be discordant with everything I did before. I leaned it toward orange, but I'm not so sure that's the best choice. I, I may go back in there and see what I can do. Yeah, I probably will today. But the point of, of um, yesterday was just to get this far, get this rose done. And I feel pretty good about this. And then I went and put in a background that is a little swingy. <laughs> so that was fun. I may play with it today. We'll see. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, thanks. Oh, enjoy my YouTube channel. Okay, bye-bye.